Hey guys, welcome to uh, Mifika After 90. We got a very special edition, uh, really a three-parter here. We got Rui Gomes da Silva. Uh, myself and Alex had the opportunity to interview the man running to be the next president of Mifika, and he is a man that's been getting a lot of media attention, uh, a lot of coverage, and as we've uh, seen the events that unfold over the last few years, uh, people are honestly taking a second look at the club and just reevaluating their options. Uh, so it'll be a fascinating upcoming election. I think it's worth having these discussions. I think it's worth uh, striving to be greater and better. And for way of background, it wasn't really planned, scripted in terms of uh, the structure of this uh, interview. So we broke it up into the first two parts, just us having a natural back and forth with him. Uh, he found out that a lot of our audience is English based uh, from all over the world. Uh, from South Africa to Canada to Australia to the U.S. to the U.K. all the way to Nepal. Uh, so he himself offered to uh, speak in English uh, to reach out to the audience. We were going to do it subtitled, but he wanted to um, give it a go. So I'm very impressed by him doing that. It's very cool. I hope you guys enjoy, and we can't wait to hear some of your feedback. That's going to be patching through. We got Rui Gomes and Silva with us. Uh, so I want to start off with a big thank you so much for taking your time uh, to spend uh, with uh, Vifik After 90 here. Much appreciated. Thank you. It's my pleasure, and uh, I hope and I I, I, I think that to be a, a good a good time just to to know more more a little bit about me and to know about my project to Benfica. Thank you very much for the invitation. Perfect. And we asked uh, Rui Gomes. He said he's he's going to try to do everything in English if he can. A few words in Portuguese will subtitle along the way. Uh, but his goal is to get his message out to all Benficas, and he knows that. Uh, so as the message leaving Portugal doesn't get out there as often. So we want to try something in English for the English fans out there, which we're excited about. Sure. Um, and then, uh, you know, Alex, you want to kick it off just to ask the first question, I guess, that you have? or uh, Yeah, man. For, first, I want to thank you because we were pretty excited about this the whole week. And Mario told us that, you know, this might happen. We were, we were really excited. Uh, Benfica means a lot to us um, and anybody associated with the club and anybody we feel um, loves the club as much as we do. It's, it's, it's it's really exciting for me. So I want to thank you again for joining us here on Benfica After Ninety uh, and your time. And really quick, just easy questions. You know, um, you know, when when did you start? When when did you become a Benfica fan? When did you start fall in love with Glorioso? <laughs> uh, thank you for, for uh, again for the invitation. Thank you for the question. But let me begin to, to beg your pardon about uh, about one thing. I I understand that everybody is well dressed. And I am just dressed with a shirt, with a white shirt. Oh, no, that's all. No. So, so I understand that we have a lot of, uh, of things about, of stuff about Benfica. I'm very sorry about it. I am at home. So, but uh, after that, let's go to speak about that. And let's go to explain how I arrived here, how I am uh, Benfica. In fact, I have no choice. My father, when I was born in 1958, 23 of August 1958, a couple of years ago, and I know it. Uh, I was born on a Saturday, <laughs> and at that time there was no mails, no internet, nothing. And the first thing uh, uh, the, my, my father has done uh, the, the, at that time was to, to know if it is a girl or a boy, and then uh, a boy and uh, walk to the, uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the station of the Correio uh, CTT, yeah. uh, uh, yeah. the the to to send the the, the mail to to send the the the, the envelope with my uh, my coordinates and to to ask Benfica to be member of Benfica. So I I member of Benfica since I was born, and when I arrived to Benfica, uh, I, this is a, a thing that uh, I'm probably the, the youngest uh, member of the of the of the direction of Benfica, of the member of the board of Benfica, with so many years of of member. I was born in 58 and all my uh, my hardness was made uh, linked with Benfica. My father chose the holidays to come to Lisbon. I was born in Oporto to come to Lisbon and to see the first match of uh, Champions League of Benfica at those years. Uh, we spent some uh, holidays, Sundays, Saturdays, Wednesdays coming to Lisbon or seeing Benfica around the world, around the north part of Portugal. In 1960s, my father went to Viseu, that is a, a, a yeah. city, a small city near, uh, in, the, in the middle of Portugal. Yeah. And he was elected as president of Sport Viseu in Benfica. That was a filial, uh, a small uh, delegation of Benfica. And I, with uh, 18 years old, I came to Lisbon to see the 12th 
uh, anniversary of the old school uh, Stadio da Luz, the old Stadium of Benfica, just to present a match there. So I have a, a, my my life was linked with Benfica, was a great connection with Benfica for everything. We spent holidays near Lisbon to come to see Benfica, and every time we go out of Portugal. Uh, some to some, uh, some other cities, there are three things that my father would like to go. The first one is railway station because my father is a fan of the railways, of the trains, etc. The second one is the cathedral to see the, the old architecture. In the, and the third is the stadium where Benfica uh, has played or where Benfica could play in the next, uh, next season or something like that. And I remember that once... Uh, Keeping the not with my father, but keep keeping the the tradition. I went to Horos in the, in Denmark, Denmark, and I went to see the first uh, match the, where Benfica played the first match when he arrived in '61 to to begin to begin the first time champion of Europe. Very so cool. this is uh, and every time that now <laughs> I go to a stadium to see Benfica play now. With the, as I, you can understand, I, I go ever um, a lot of, of times to go to see Benfica, and with seven years and a half, three months as member of the board, as vice president of Benfica, I spent uh, I during the, those seven years and three months, I only le left uh, uh, four matches: one in Guimarães, one in Bordeaux, one in uh, Istanbul, and one in, one in Chad. So I spent all my life traveling around Portugal and Europe and even the United States. I went to Princeton. I went to Toronto with a team yeah. representing Benfica because I was charged at that time as vice president for institutional relations. And I travel, I, I, I travel, I travel always with the team. So this is a, a short story of a long, long story with 61 yeah. one years old. Let me explain one thing. In, in the, when I came to the faculty of law of Lisbon, at that time, in uh, 1976, there was no faculty of law in Oporto. I played Rincoque in Academic do Porto, and I moved to Benfica. I played in Benfica one, one year as juniors and two years as senior in the in principal team. And at last, uh, at last year, I was a championship. I, we won championship, and uh, after a lot of years losing, we won again. I don't make a lot of, uh, of, of matches. I cannot say how much I have done mm -hmm. because you will <laughs> laugh about me. But I'm for sure that I'm the one that uh, the most well-dressed of the of locking, of locker room. So yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, 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 I discovered that Rick Locker is not my future. And I was at that time in other, in other things. And I left Rick Locker in 1980. We won the championship, 79-80. We won Ring Hockey Championship. So this is my small story, and then the other things you we can discuss and we can speak about in the in the next uh, questions. Yeah, yeah, of course. Absolutely. And uh, I had a I had a few people I, I told that we were gonna we we're gonna talk. But I had uh, someone out of Boston. Uh, uh, they were kind of curious about the background and how much does he does he get to see many games? And then all of a sudden you're telling me your story. I'm like, okay, clearly this guy's watched a lot of games, which is good. Said he missed very four good. games. <laughs> very good, very good. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Um, that's that's a great story. And then in terms of um, if I looked a little bit more current, so let's say in the last 10, 20 years, um, mm -hmm. when you've been watching, let's say Bifika on the football side. Um, in terms of players, is, is there been like one player to you? I know there's lots of players and we always love various players, but is there one player that's popped out more to you over the last 10, 20 years compared to that, that you kind of stood more with you? Like watching? Yes, uh, during the last 20 years, let me tell. Since the 2000, um, yeah. let me see what, uh, what I think that we have at that time. Probably the year, uh, the last, in the last 10 years, we have uh, good uh, good players, but uh, let me see. I think that the, the one of the most uh, incredible teams that we had in last years was the, the, the one that was champion of Portugal in 2009-2010. At that time, we have yeah. probably uh, one one player that I if I if I elect one, it's very difficult, as you know. Because yeah, because there's so many that are yeah, so good. Goalkeeper, yeah, keeper. Uh, yeah, you have the, the defender. You have the but uh, we have middle field, we have the, the, the attackants. But at that time, we had ones that was a, a fantastic player, that is Pablo Aymar. Yeah. Pablo Aymar probably 
is the, the best one during the last 10, 15 years, if you are speaking about that. Because before that, we have the, the generation of Humberto Coelho, Pietra, um, Tony, uh, yeah. um, Shalana, for example, Albert Magalhães, uh, other, other defenders, Bento, José Henrique, etc. But, so, after 2000, probably the best thing that we have uh, in as goalkeepers, two of them that are will be the most uh, one, uh, two of the most of the best goalkeepers in the world in uh, in coming years was Oblak and Ederson. Oblak is now at yeah. Atletico Madrid, and uh, uh, Ederson at Manchester City. And we had, uh, if you are speaking about future, but we have the past. We have Julius Caesar, that was on his generation one of the best goalkeepers, if not the best one. So we are speaking about that. In in defender, we have probably we have Garay. That was a fantastic defender. We have the Luiz. That is not a, in the. If you see in technical terms, is not a, the the best one, but it has a lot of time. You know what yeah. we call in Benfica as, 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 as members of Benfica, we call Mistica. Yeah. And the uh -huh. Luiz, it is a fantastic. It's a fantastic player. As I used to say, I never took a photo with a player that arrives to Benfica. I only took a couple of photos, two or three in my life, with the players that go ahead from Benfica. And David Luiz, for example, Julius Cesar, for example, uh, Haimar, for example, Saviola, that were the, the kind of players that we are, when we look, we are very proud in our, that, uh, to see they, they dress the, the jersey of Benfica, that they are fantastic players. But of course, we have other players, Di Maria, Ramirez, that coming from... Uh, from uh, from from Brazil at that yeah. time we have Cardoso, uh, we have Lima for example, we have uh, uh, the other one the, the Spanish one the other one that plays now in Valencia that is uh, Rodrigo. Rodrigo, yeah, you know? Rodrigo. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, if we are speaking uh, we have Fabio Coentrão on left side uh, we have uh, other guys we have uh, Ma Maxi Pereira. Is not uh, is forbidden to speak about him. Yeah. Was, <laughs> but during the time, it was fun. <laughs> he was fun to watch. He was a very yeah. good player. Yeah. Right? You know, when when he dressed correctly, like with yeah. my, with red, in red, it was a fantastic player. When he moved to another small team in north of Portugal, <laughs> uh, he, he lost uh, a lot. He lost uh, a lot of, of, of skills. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, where he is now, but uh, for yes, we are speaking. And uh, but but Benfica has, a, has fantastic players that. Uh, and let me see. Let me speak about the two uh, other other players that uh, I think that we will uh, miss them. The first one is Jonas. I think during last 15, 15 years, if you speak about the two top players, probably with the more important in the in the in the in the career of Benfica was Pablo Aymar. And uh, the other one is uh, Jonas, because he's a fantastic, intelligent player. He's not a strong player, but intelligent player. And the other one is the young one that only played 26 games uh, with Benfica, but is João Felix. Yeah. That uh, probably, yeah, if you will stay in Benfica just now, you will be one of the most uh, players with the, 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 the more in, in, the, in the future. But he moved to Athletic Madrid. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, sometimes you need uh, to be around your nest and nest is this is, a, is the real the real world because the, the nest of the Hegels is Benfica to, to, to go forward and go ahead and uh, João Félix is uh, this is one of the difference between me and this when beginning speaking about the other part of our conversation yeah. if you if you asking me one one thing that is that I will do differently completely different is the the time that the young players will stay in Benfica. It's impossible to have, <laughs> yeah. to have you know, it's impossible to have a, a sportive project, a project to win a championship, to be a very important player in Europe, uh, to have an important, uh, important role in Europe, of, in football of Europe. When you arrive a player, he began to, he began to, be, to, be, to be very good and then you sold it, you sell it. In a, in, a, in, a, in a couple of months. So it's impossible. Yeah. And this, if you want to, and then we can speak about that, to, to win Champions League, Champions League, it's difficult. Of course it is. Oh, it's, it's impossible. No, it's not. You know? And this is not different. Impossible. Because when I speak about that uh, during, last, uh, during the seven years and three months that I spent uh, inside Benfica as vice president, a member of the board of SAD, that rules the football, 
when I speak about that, they laugh, they laugh about, uh, against me, they laugh with my words, saying, because I think that is a real dream. Uh, I have to do a lot of things correctly. I have to be just the, the, the things that to, must be very aligned just to win. Of course it is. Of course we know it. But just uh, if you are in the United States, like uh, like John Gant used to say in his uh, inaugural uh, the speech, uh, probably it will not take one one year, one uh, one mandate. But uh, let me begin. And let us begin. Yeah. And then is the, the the right the right the right path. It's a tough job. It's a tough path. Of course it is. But it's not impossible. And this is my dream. And uh, this is okay. I'm I'm actually glad that you brought that up um, because. Well, the, the one thing that we talk about here on the show uh, a lot is Champions League, is European glory. Um, to Benfiquistas, we're the biggest club in the world. Yet it's not Real Madrid, it's not Barcelona. To us, we're the biggest in the world. Um, but sometimes to the rest of the world, you know, that glory, those glory days have kind of been forgotten a little bit. You know what I mean? Like when we talk about great players for Benfica, Eusebio comes up. Uh, that's the only one. I mean, since the seventies, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like, like a worldwide kind of like. What is it that Benfica has to do to put its name back um, up top with those with those big clubs? Is it European glory? Is it Champions League? Is it a Euro Cup? Well, you know, what does Benfica do to kind of, you know, bring that Mishtika back for the rest of the world and and not just you know, not just us. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, let, let me, uh, let's, let's speak about the beginning of the story. Yeah. Beginning of story, we are not speaking about the, the very beginning, but beginning of story in 1950 when Befica won the Tassa Latina, yeah. Latina Cup. Latin Cup. And this is the beginning of story. And then it, it was, we are speaking about 50s. In the 50s, we won in the Latin countries, Latin, Latin champions. And then we go to, to the Champions League, to Liga dos Campeões at that, at that time, Tassa dos Campeões Europeus, European uh, Cup, yeah, uh, yeah. Champions Cup that was a quite different because you only you have to play the uh, the first the, the best sixteen the best eight the best four the best uh, and best two so you have four or uh, to arrive to the final three three matches to, to six matches to arrive to the final and uh, in the very beginning you you will play against uh, very uh, not very strong very weak uh, weak teams. This and in, in the 60s, when you Benfica won, when the, my father's generation won a ch two Champions League in a row, it was very difficult. It's probably more difficult at that time Benfica won a Champions League than now to win a Champions League, you know, because the, the platform, the, the way where we begin is very, very low. It's not the Benfica in a level that we are nowadays. And, and I will speak there, that about, about my own experience. And about my experience as as, as Benfica, uh, as Benfica member of the board, what what and uh, if they won, of course they had Eusebio, but we have to remember that the first Champions League was won without win. We mm -hmm. won one without Eusebio, without yeah, Simon, yeah. with mm -hmm. a, with a, with a couple of guys that, uh, as my father used to say, they kick off the ball where they are. They 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 was directed so. Uh, I, I, I cannot say the, the one that my father says that used to say that, but they are the, <laughs> we have not the best 11 players of the world, but we won Champions League because mm -hmm. we won. Of course, we have Bella Gutmann. We have a, a, a different mind step of in Benfica that changed. We have Otto Gloria, a Brazilian one that you remember that changed the, the way that you look to the, to the match, that you, the, the way you look to the organization. And then arrives Bella Gutmann that is a at a kind of, uh, of at that time, uh, uh, I don't know if it's Graham Mourinho, it's uh, Pep Guardiola, but it was, at that time probably it, is, it was. So, we, 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 we began, and you can remember that we won 61, 62, we lost 63, 65, 68, we lost 88 and 90, and we lost in the UEFA League in 83 with Ericsson, Sven Gorn and Ericsson against Anderlecht. And uh, with the Zeus, we lost in 2013, 2014. So we have the the, the we have the, the possibilities to arrive there. What what is to, what we have to do? We have to, to look to the to the to the to the team and construct the team in a cup in a period of four years, three years, four years, just to try to do that. Not only with the, the formation, as you saw, the formation like it is, 
and uh, that we we sent off with with this with this contract with George Sous again. But the the formação the, the the school the school of Efica it's a part of the project. It's not the project. And if you confuse and if you make a confusion between the project of the formation of yeah. the, the the school of of, of Seychelles and the, the principal team, it was a huge mistake. And this, it was one of the mistakes that the, 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 the guys that are in, in, in job now are doing during last last years. Because, and they, is, they construct the model not to win in Europe, but to sell and to, to send off and to win money yes. with the players that arrive from, from, the, 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 from the, the academy of so, FIFA. Yeah. First. Second, you have to, like, and you can see, in 1997, you, I, I'm not explaining my own experience. I ran for vice presidency in uh, 89, in 97, vice president of football, and I lost with Luis Tadeu against Valiusvid. And then I entered in, in 2000, uh, 2009 till 2016. So in, in 2097, in when I ran, uh, uh, was, I ran for vice president of football, the project was at that time already the formation, the academy of Mefica. Yeah. Like, and our model was Ajax at that time also. But why Ajax was the model in the uh, 20 or 25 years ago, and nowadays they kept, and uh, they, 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 they kept during 20 years without appearances in last uh, four or last eight of the, of the Champions League, because they make the same mistake Benfica is doing now. They, are, they have good players, they, sold, they sell good players. They they have good players. They they fire good players to, to the to the to the good to the very good teams of Europe, and then they will be, they will, they they begin to lose uh, systematically. And Benfica, this is the, the 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 one the first the first thing is to, to to understand that only the academy is constructing the uh, the the principal team. It's completely wrong. The second one is to keep the player just one year or two. Except Luizão, for example, but you will see Ederson plays one year and a half. It was it was sold to Le uh -huh. Manchester City. Uh -huh. Al Black he played one year and he was sold to Atlet Madrid. Di Maria played one or two uh, uh, two, two years in Benfica and it was sold to Real Madrid. Then you have other guys. Uh, Ramirez was sold to, to Chelsea, I think. Uh, uh, so, Rodrigo plays one year or two, it was held to Valencia. Yeah. Gonçalo gets the same thing. Uh, Bernardo Silva never played oh, yeah. except one yeah. match in Benfica, and we lost in Oporto when he played. So, João Cancelo never played except that, that match or two matches in the first team. In first team. So, we have a lot of good players that uh, war, was not uh, uh, constructing a team, a real, a real team, but is constructing a business. And difference, it is my difference between those guys that are in, in job, that are in charge, and my project. That uh, They understand the football as a business. I understand the football as a project to win in, in, in sportive terms. We must win because the, 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 the said, brand that you have there yeah. is not a commercial brand. It's not an Adidas. Yeah. It's not a McDonald's. It's not, a, yeah. you know, just you want to sell. When you make a, a strategic... Uh, uh, partnership with uh, the principal uh, entrepreneur of that want to sell players, it is a wrong, a very, a very a huge mistake that Benfica is doing. Because what is the, inter the interest of George Mendes? To sell, to sell players. Yeah. Because you, 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 want, you win money with that. This is his job. What is my interest? Not to, not to, to keep the players inside and to make improvement in, in skills, in sportive skills. So, is a personal strategic, as you say in Portuguese, yeah. is a strategic mm -hmm. partnership that will uh, destroy Benfica. Probably will keep uh, rich the people that are in job and they are involved in this uh, business, but will uh, destroy Benfica in sportive terms. And if in Portugal is enough, because you spoke about that, you, you said that Benfica is a huge team. Yes, it is. Is because if you have only if you have six million in Portugal. Not six million you will pay to, to, to Jesus, but six millions of supporters. Yeah. You, if you have 14 millions in, in around the world, I can ask you what kind of, of teams, except, for example, uh, Flamengo, of course, yeah. 
what um, Real Madrid probably in Barcelona because they have a huge presence around the world. But for example, Bayern Munich has 14 uh, supporters, real supporters that Benfica has around the world. No, they don't have. Chelsea has no. Uh, Manchester United probably yes, but they have now with the people that for that the the, the, the far uh, Orient uh, with the, the China or the, the Korea, mm -hmm. the, South Korea, etc., yeah. etc., etc. Et because when you're speaking about the, the, the normal, the, the platform where we were born, Benfica is probably the, the biggest one, except the Brazilians and the, probably the Argentinian one. But even with Argentinians, I don't know. So we have the mass critic, we have the critical mass to, to improve and to develop a great, a, great, a great club. And we must win. Oh, how can we do with the three years or four years terms uh, project? You, in the first year, you construct a team. Second year, you make some arrangements. Third year is to make one or two players that are missing and you understand that are missing. And then you have two years to run for the, 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 the Champions League. And only after that, you can imagine and you can accept to sell the players, not before that. Before that, it would be a huge uh, business for the people that win money with that. I don't, I don't care about that. I am, I'm not here to win money. I'm not here because, because Benfica is not a, a, a commercial project. Yeah, it's, I, a, I, it's I, for I, members. I, yes, it's for members. We are, and do you know, when I, inside during seven years and three months that I spoke about that, they laughed about, about me and they laughed about, about my idea. And they said, oh, it's impossible. Let us do the things that they are. It's impossible if we can win Champions League. And this is the first... Uh, the first uh, rupture that I had with the, 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 with the, 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 the president that I can't believe that Benfica cannot go for the Champions League. Of course, it's difficult, yes. But, you know, for example, every year we have the, the, the principals, the, the members of the board uh, meeting to, to, to prepare the next season. And every year I, I spoke about that because the main goal of the, the in European terms is to arrive to the best eight. Yeah. And I said it's impossible. A team like Benfica, you have you cannot arrive to the final or to be champions, the champion champion of, of Europe. But the goal that when you begin a season, the goal is to arrive to final and to be champions of, of Europe, to, to win the Champions League. And this, I understand that because it's more easier to mm. say to, to, the, to the newspapers that we, we have a, a, a goal and we achieve yeah. the goal very easily that go to the, the quarter of final. And as you know, during last year, it was a, uh, it was a Borgogna. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, yes. No, it was. It's yeah. embarrassing. It was embarrassing. It's embarrassing because we lose against the... Uh, the Italian, the, the Swiss, Basel, Swiss Basel, 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 five zero, the five yeah. zero. We lose against every every team, and and what is important? Ah, but we go to Marques to commemorate the, the, the Champions League, uh, the championship, the Portuguese championship. And I will, I will, I will close my my this intervention. I used to say that uh, Red Star of Yugoslavia, uh, Dinamo de Bucharest of uh, on or Stevo de Bucharest in Romania, Anderlecht, the Rosenborg, for example, in Norway, etc. They stay with Bucharest and still a red star in the Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia. They won the Champions League, and nowadays they don't exist. Dinam Zagreb, Dinam de Kiev, Dinam de Minsk, uh, other big, big, big teams at that time that uh, used to, to, to play this, they don't exist. Why? Because they look inside, they accept that the most important is to win the champion, the, the, the national championship. They began to sell the players and then. They disappear of the of the of the and and at the end when you want to have market in the in South Korea in China mm -hmm. in the Middle East or in the Africa etc you must win Champions League and this exactly, is yeah. the, the only thing that important nobody cares about Portuguese Championship nobody yeah. cares about Portuguese Cup nobody cares that I win against Aves Rio Ave uh, Famalicão. Uh, do you know Chaves, uh, Sturil? Nobody cares. Stubble, nobody cares about that. I play against Chelsea. I win. It's good. I lost. Is a, uh, Chelsea will be the best. So this is the this is the main goal that we have to discuss and we have to go forward to to look for that. And so when I look at like a good example was earlier this year. So we go to the group stage of the Champions League. We have our first match against Real Leipzig at the Luge. 
And I, I can't remember the exact number, but I remember that match and I was very, let's say upset for a lack of better words, because I think four to five of the players we played had yet to really play for Bifika this season yet. So much and, 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 never played a, a professional game until that and, day. And we joke because we do our show. Our show usually is after the game's done. We get together the same day and we talk with a few fans just to, to either laugh, cry or whatever, depending on what happens. And we joke because it's, we treat the Champions League today like we're, 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 it's a, we're a store and we're putting up our, our newest fashion line or our newest product to sell. And that, that's what it felt. I didn't feel like we went to that game against Real. It, we, we fought good. We could have maybe got some points out of the game, but it's the mentality going into the game. It felt like we're there to sell players, show off in the Champions League, sell, not there to win. And, and out of curiosity, I don't – and at the time we'd fight, not fight, but we'd debate about – is that the manager? Is that a general manager? Is that the president? In terms of decision making, this is the area we, we feel there's a, a lack of transparency at Bifica. That type of decision making, does it come from the top of the house, the middle of the house? Where, where, where do you find that comes from at the moment? <laughs> if, if I have the answer, if I have the, yeah. the, the answer, I can, I can win the, the Euro Millions, as you said, yeah. lottery. Yeah. Uh, let me let me tell you, you my my experience, uh, my my own experience. Of course, we know that Tomas Tavares or Nuno Tavares never have played a professional uh, match because he played on juniors yeah. and he never played in B team and he went to to, to arrive to the The first thing is to uh, the, there are two two ways. The first thing is the probably uh, uh, feeling of the, the 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 manager, the principal manager at that time, Bruno Lars, that understand that if played with the best team in the in Champions League he will lose the next match in championship, you know? So, he was probably doing that. If I put Andre Almeida that was at that time with the, with the problems, he yeah. put, put Grimaldi, he put Pizzi, etc. He had problems in next matches. It can be injury and uh, we, we have matches. But the other thing that probably when you speak and do anywhere a uh, strategic partnership with someone that are ruling those players because... Uh, uh, Nuno Tavares and uh, Nuno Tavares. Probably they, the, 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 the official version is that it's not George Mendes that is the, 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 the agent, the, the, the manager of their career. But at the end of the day, it is. Because nobody, you can, you can imagine, João Félix, for example, he, was, he has another agent, agent that, but in the end of the day, who, who, who cares about who, who, who managed the, the transfer to Atlético Madrid? Jorge Mendes, you yeah. know. Uh, who, today we are speaking about a new, a new, a new, a new, a new manager. Jorge Jesus has a special link, a direct link with the, the president. But before that, we spoke about Pochettin. Pochettin, yeah. the agent of Pochettin, is not Jorge Mendes. Benfica don't need an agent to make a, a deal with a, a manager. Why George Benz appears in the middle trying to make the business between Pochettino and Benfica? That I never believed that it will be, uh, uh, it, it will be signed because it's impossible by, by other reasons that I will explain. So, if you ask me who will determine, we'll, we will think about that, we will say that we'll play the young ones or the, 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 the not very young ones, the, the, the mm -hmm. best. I think probably are uh, a feeling from the, the manager, but of course a conversation with the, with the, with the, with the president. It's impossible that uh, a member uh, manager will do that and will choose if if don't, if if he don't have or if he didn't have uh, a support from the the board, you know. So it's mm -hmm. the president that says so say okay, let's do that. Let's put the, the young ones just to see. If they appear as a, a good players, in order that we can sell it and we can, you can imagine the last uh, 15 days, the president says that he has on the 1st of June, it's not one year and the, one, one month and a half ago, the president says that the, in the B team, there is a, a couple of players that can, can win the champion, the championship in Portugal against the Sporting and Porto. Because at that time you he, he thought that you will win the championship, and then uh, one month and uh, or five five weeks after that, we uh, we realized that even the, the first team cannot win a Portuguese championship. Because we you, when you when you compare 
with a team of, for example, 2009, 2010, with Aymar, Pablo, Luizão, Maxi Pereira, Fabio Coentrão, David Luiz in the middle, and Luizão. You have Xavi Garcia, you have Di Maria, Aymar, Ramirez, Sa uh, Saviola, e uh, Cardoso. And you compare nowadays with compare Saviola Cardoso with Vinicius, with Seferovic, or with uh, Diego Souza. If you, if you compare Servi with Di Maria, if you compare Ramirez with Pizzi, if you compare Xavi Garcia with, uh, <laughs> with Gabriel, for example, if you compare uh, Ferro and uh, Ruben Dias with, uh, with uh, Luizão and David Luiz, yeah. if you compare André Almeida with Maxi, and if you compare uh, Grimaldo probably, or, uh, but uh, uh, Nuno Tavares, for example, Tomás Tavares with, uh, with, uh, with Fabio Coentrão, them and at that time you have King that is not a fantastic goalkeeper but uh, makes a uh, makes a difference yeah, yeah. in some matches you know so oh, you I, compare I, I, those the first eleven it's it's a huge difference how can you ask the team to have good performance in Europe if the team if you compare with that uh, is uh, let me say the the Benfica has the the best players in the world always as you know but when you when you are speaking about inside inside of uh, among has of course it is a half of it yeah and, and one thing I, I look at a lot is uh, my background's more on the finance side but I, I think you're spot on you look at that that team what I am are that won the championship th that year you take that team versus today's Mifika and it'd be like Fika versus Rio Ave there's the day and night difference that the quality of that team back then is just that much higher and I look at the budget Bifika had back then and I look at today, where in the last several years, we sold over half a billion dollars worth of talent. And, and we mm -hmm. spent some money, but I feel as each few years go by, as a percentage of what we spend is getting less. And what I mean by that is before we'd sell, let's say we sold 40 million, we might've spent 30 million. Now we sell 100 million and we spend 35 million. It feels like we're spending, we're making more than ever before, but as a percentage, we're spending less and less on the main team. Um, and it just feels like there's a disconnect. It feels like there's just this, it's slowly deteriorating. Like if you continue down this path, we will become uh, one of these teams like Donetsk, like Red Star Brigade, where we're just too content domestically and you'll never be able to achieve higher, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So when you look at building a team, do you focus more on, on the quality of the senior players and if there's the right youth player to bring up, bring them into the system? Um, it seems like that's where you're leaning because right now the status quo is more of, we got the youth system. Let's just bring up as much of the youth as we can, sell it and keep bringing up youth. And you kind of get stuck in neutral, I feel like. So um, so it would be, in your idea, it would be more to kind of have build a core team, build quality, try to hold the quality longer, uh, whether it be trying to offer a better contract or uh, negotiating even. Because uh, we did it with David Luiz. David Luiz had a lot of offers, it sounded like. But we were able to convince him to stay an extra year and a bit more uh, to, to help the team out. And we had a bit more of a competitive side. So trying to have the, that extra push to keep those guys in one or two years longer. Um, I want to touch on that, Mario, uh, yeah. with the players. Because mm -hmm. you mentioned, you know, keeping the players is, is, is a big thing. You know, how do you convince a 20-year-old, you know, not to move to Atletico Madrid for a $100 million purse? You know, how do you convince these kids who, who I'm sure have their own, um, their, their own goals, their own drives, but how do you convince – these kids that the best move is to make it uh, to make a name for yourself to be consistent uh, how do you convince them to stay with Benfica instead of going to chase the, the money the money bag you know how, how do we how, where do you start is, is it agents or, or is it conversations with these with these people because I don't think I'll ever get over Juan Felix leaving I know he wasn't with us for very long but that stretch of football was so magical to me it was he was like I, I can truly say he was one of my favorite players. He played six months. They ever played for Benfica. I was so enamored by him, his skill set, how much he loved the, the club. And then, you know, a couple months later, he's, he's, he's out of there. He's, he's in Spain now. You know, how, it's how like we, were, we rushed to sell him. It feels like we were pushing yeah. it. it, it like yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, let, let me, let me two, two or three things that we are speaking about. The first one is the difference between the – the, 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 the money we win and the money we are paying for yeah. new, new, new players. The second one is the, the project and the third one is to, to keep the, the, the young players in Benfica. First one, 
The first one is the difference between in last 10 years, Benfica uh, uh, sold uh, players and have rece has received 1 billion euros. Yeah. 1 billion euros. At, on the other side, Benfica has uh, uh, bought uh, players to the principal team that it was important by 300, 300 million euros. So it means that we make the difference that the, the, we kept the other 60, 60, uh, 600, uh, 600,000 million euros just around the world. We never know uh, in what, because we don't bought uh, good players. We played the structures. We are nowadays, when I left four years ago, I think that the, the number of, uh, of employees here, if we are 250, now we have 640, for example. Oh my God, At that time, insane. we have... Uh, we have uh, we have uh, five, 50 players or uh, 40 players. Uh, now we have 105 players, professional players. We have uh, we have a lot of, of loans of, 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 of players that will never play in Benfica. When you are playing, we are speaking about Lema, Conti, uh, Alfa Smedo, Morato, uh, Ferreira. Uh, RD, RDT, etc., etc. You will, we, you when you look to them, when you see players, you under, you can understand that they can never play in a good, in a good, in a in a very good team. And for example, play uh, Freire, I think there's a problem, and it was the, the, the reason why they came to Portugal. RDT was a good player in the second division, or in a small a small player. So the first one is to to to, to make the the gap, to 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 close the gap between the the one the. The, the things that you you win and the things that you consume the, the, the on, on the other side so you may you may you have to be balanced you can and you cannot uh, buy players like Cadiz and the presence uh, announced that it was not to play in Benfica but it's only to make some business I would like to say to the other to, to the members of the of Benfica that Benfica is not a commercial pro, 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 uh, idea that is a, not a commercial project is not to buy like we buy we buy a car and then or we buy a, a plot to, to, to construct a, a house and then we will sell a house after with a, a added value uh, to use the Marxist uh, uh, terminolo uh, terminology just just like that no it's not you, you cannot you cannot look to a team lucky like it is a uh, 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 a construct a, a company that you buck the plots, you make the house, and do ma you make a, you make a profit, you make add value with that. No, it's not. It's not. It's not to have uh, players that will never. We, we know that we never. They will never play in in, in Benfica. Alpha Smith, for example, is a mistake. But th they already know that is a mistake. For example, we had Ederson at, uh, as a junior of Benfica. It was at that time the best goalkeeper of Benfica. Everybody knew that. Why he was sent off to Ribeirão? After six months, he, he went to Rio Ave and after one year, he came to, to Benfica. Do you know why? Because we have 100% of, the, of, of, his, uh, of the, the rights of Ederson. And one year after that, after Ribeirão and Rio Ave, we have only 50%. And when we sold it to Manchester City, we won 25 million euros and we must win we must win at that time 50 million euros, you know? Mm. And why it, it, it happens? Why we have Alpha Smith? Why we bought Chiquinho from 600,000 six yeah. uh, uh, euros, six, 600,000 euros from Academica? We sent it to, to Moreirense. And one year later, we bought five, the, the same player that we, we sent to them by 4.5 million euros. Do you know nice. why? Because one article in the contract that Benfica, if you, Benfica wants the player, must pay half of the price that was offered by another another club. And at that time, Krosnodar, the one that uh, sent uh, that fire by port last year from the, uh, offered nine million euros from Chiquinho. Do you know our luck? I'm very lucky as a member of Benfica because <laughs> imagine that other other team that offers fifty million. Yeah. And, and Chiquinho, it was very, very important, as you can imagine, and the Benfica has to play 4 point million euros by, by a player that bought one year before by 600,000 six, uh, 600, euros. So this is different. This is the thing. The first, the second thing is to construct a, a, 
a building idea, a team, a team idea. Because you play in the 4-3-3 when you play in the, young, in the half uh, teams. In the initial juveniles and juniors, yeah. we, pl we play, I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. There we go, okay. got you back. <laughs> yes, yeah, so someone who is calling me. Yeah. Uh, you played in the 4-3-3. When you arrived to principal team, since George Zuz, you play in 4-4-2 or 4-1-3-2, yeah. it's different. Yeah. But the base is 4-4-2. It's not possible. When you look to the Academy of Barcelona and you look to, for example, to the autobiography of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, you know, the, the one from Manchester. Uh, Will Ferguson. No, the, the, the player that was married with uh, the victory... Uh, Beckham, uh, David Beckham. Oh, yeah, Beckham. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Victoria, yes, Victoria. Yeah, 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 yeah. The other guys, they say that go to the principal team when they are young guys to see, not to see the Manchester play, but to see how plays number eight, how plays number seven, how plays number eight, 11, you know? This is what the... And Benfica, they make all the, 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 the formation playing in 4-3-3 and when they arrive to, uh, to, to the principal team, they play in 4-4-2 because we don't understand and we cannot imagine and we cannot uh, find a, a manager that plays in 4-3-3. In to, and to arrive to, uh, to, 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 to the last question that you posed, why, yeah. when, why you, you can keep... Uh, a player with 21, 21 years, do you know? Not missing money in the other in the other players because it's not a problem uh, to if you if if you keep if you if you sent off Cabbage, if you sent off Half a Smith, if you sent off a, a lot of players and you keep you can give those players the best players the same conditions that we have. We will play four million euros net for George Zuz that is coming from Flamengo. Uh, tom to tomorrow or, or the day after tomorrow. Uh, and it means that 8 million euros for a, for a manager. I will ask you, and I would like to ask everybody, do you, can you imagine how many managers, trainers uh, in, around the world you can find for those prizes that probably are more curricula, the, more curricula than George Zuz? You can imagine that. Can you imagine, for example, to play, to pay, to, to pay 1 million, 2 million, for him, he's, a, he's a fantastic player. For example, uh, Zipkovic is, is improving his, his player. He is now, uh, I, what was, I, I was reading, that his next, uh, next uh, season he will, he will uh, win 5 million euros. Can you imagine how many players in the world are, are you, can, you, can you find for 5 million euros in, in Portugal, to play in Benfica? A lot of them. Because Benfica has a, a budget of 200 92 to around 300 million, 300 million euros. Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester United, uh, uh, how do you say, Bayern, they have more or less 800 million euros. It's different because with 300 million euros in Portugal, you can do be better than, than you, you can do in, in, in Madrid or in the Munich, München or in, uh, in, in, in London with a huge uh, budget. What is the budget, the, the compensation budget? 15 days of match day, 40 days, 40, 15 percent of match day, 40 uh, percent of uh, TV rights, and 45 percent of of, uh, of merchandising. This is the you can measure the Bayern as much more than this. The, the the English team began to increase the, the the TV rights. So, but you can do that, and you can go for a project if you have not have a commercial project, you have a sportive project. This is the difference between a passion project and a commercial project. And if you have a commercial, you can never win in a, a passion base. And they think it can only win in Europe if there is a, a lot of passion to win Champions League. Yeah. No, that I fully agree with. And I, I think you also touch a little bit on wow. something that there's a lot of people that were, because we asked a few friends of ours, okay, if there's a couple of things you want to touch on. And we know it's a theme. Like I asked some people in the UK and Canada, um, in the U.S., uh, we got some people in Africa, and uh, and the general theme was a lack of transparency. And you kind of are touching on it a certain bit because we have all these different deals everywhere, and, and it seems that sometimes we're making deals because agents get paid money for like signing Kyle Lucas out of the Middle East to only loan him back out to the Middle East. And I'm not trying to be offensive to Kyle Lucas. I'm sure he's a nice person, but he, he you know, playing okay in in Saudi Arabia is not playing in the top level of Europe. Oh, <laughs> um, 
No, it's okay. But the um, and so sometimes you see you see these transfers, and, and you know it seems like okay, this is just a wheel and deal to 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 maybe pay an agent some money that's a friend of the club, so that way maybe. And I find the <laughs> we, priorities are a lot. We joke about it off. a lot too, Mario. We yeah. joke about it a lot. Benfica every soft season signed ten players, and nine of them are on loan. <laughs> nine of them will never put a jersey but on ever. <laughs> this uh, FIFA will forbid them the, this in the next season, so it's not possible. The, you cannot sign a player and uh, loan it in the immediately, so you, we must stay in, in the other side. Do, are, are you? Oh, yeah, I heard okay. about. I heard, yeah, I heard there's that change. Yeah, yeah, yeah that you uh, change. They change. So yeah. it was a huge, uh, huge uh, problem to Benfica because uh, it, that Benfica, those Benfica. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was uh, part one. Hopefully, you guys got a kick out of it. Uh, we broke it up to a couple parts here, just to make it easier for you guys to break it up and watch it. Leave a comment, a like, and uh, feel free to check out the uh, part two. Uh, just go on our channel here, and you'll be able to pull it up. Gahaga Mifika.